another episode of Pet Pals. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Animal wrangling for us, as always, is our volunteer coordinator, Sean Snyder. And our first guest today is one of our adoptable cats. This is Quince. Um, we had quite a few come on the floor, and then very quickly, they, a couple of them got you know, snapped up and have found new homes. So um, the numbers are dwindling again on the cat floor, but kitten season is upon us. We have um, kittens in foster care right now. Just be, you know, you know, a month or so, maybe even six weeks before they're, they're old enough to be able to be made available for adoption. But we do have some young adult cats like Quince. He's about three years old and he is in our greeter cage, which means that he's in the first cage when you walk in. He's super confident and can handle that. He's also a laid back guy. Um, not a ton of stuff seems to bother him. He's doing, you know, much better out here than, than most of the cats you may have seen on the show in the past. Like he's just sitting there like a person in a chair, like just chilling, looking around. Um, he is very, you know, playful. He's very curious. He was loving watching them clean this morning with the mop and the broom and just kind of watching that. So he might be um, helpful or not so helpful in cleaning your home. Um, might be a, a time for him to play. Um, I think even when they trimmed his nails and stuff, it only took one person. So he's just kind of super chill. And uh, he's going to make a great companion for any number of families. Um, there's no age restrictions for him. I think you mentioned that some of the volunteers say he's a little bit of a love biter. He gets a little overstimulated, wants to give a little a little nip. And then usually it's like a nip and lick, like they're cleaning you. Um, like that's how they would groom themselves. They kind of nip, bite at it a little bit and then lick it clean. Um but uh, other than that, just like a, a fun guy, a lot of people would say um, maybe they're not looking for black cats because there's kind of a negative stereotype with black cats. And I would say that's kind of a fallacy. Like black cats are awesome. Uh, I've owned black cats. And this is the, really the only country where people think that black cats are bad luck. In every other country in the world, they are listed as uh, something that would bring good fortune, good luck, things like that. So uh, let's take a cue from some of those other guys and get some of these wonderful black ad uh, adoptable cats into homes. So his paperwork says he makes the best biscuits. Why do cats make biscuits? So he's actually making biscuits right now. So when cats are, are little and they're kittens, they're nursing, they nurse on, they need on their mother to kind of stimulate milk production while they're nursing. And because that's a pleasant experience for them, a pleasant memory, when they're in a good mood, they kind of tend to still do that. You'll see them do it when they're you know getting petted like he's doing now when he's feeling nice and comfortable and relaxed. Sometimes you'll see them do that in their beds. Um, so it's a good thing when they're doing that. Um, and that's kind of comes from that memory of, of young kittenhood. And he does like to make tons of biscuits and he's very good at it. Um, he's not the only one. Pansy is one of our other adoptable cats. She's a little shyer, which is why she's not on the show today, but she is also an excellent biscuit maker. And that's something that you like. Um, we have two um, very great uh, bakers, if you will, <laughs> available for adoption right now. If you're interested in Quince or any of our adoptable cats, the first step to making them part of your family is going to be going to visit fcac.as.me to book an appointment to meet these guys. Our first canine guest today is one of the youngest dogs on the adoption floor. This is Apple, and she's about six to seven months old. Um, she is listed as a boxer mix, um, and she is a very, very sweet girl, but she does take a little time to warm up. She was with us for quite a few days. The kennel staff and some of our medical staff had to spend a lot of time with her, you know, getting really low, getting on the floor, tossing treats to make her kind of feel comfortable before they could even really get her outside. But um, the kennels are very, very stressful, especially for, you know, a young dog, a dog that's not used to that environment, maybe not as socialized as some other dogs. And once they got her outside, uh, she became more of a typical puppy wanting to engage with the other dogs and play in the grass and roll around and get belly rubs and, of course, more treats. Um, so she is, you know, she is a dog that is going to require a little patience on the part of an owner. She does warm up very quickly, but, you know, we want to make sure that there's there's not a situation where maybe she's going to end up, you know, out at breweries on the weekend that she might not really be prepared for, you know, parties in the house and things like that might be a little intense um, for her. As a puppy, you know, she is still going to need to be socialized um, and she's still going to need an owner that's willing to teach her all of the things, right? Um, it's our job as pet owners to teach our animals the things that they need to know, the good manners. Um, and since she's so young, she still needs some of those things. Um, 
although she does work pretty, uh, walk pretty nicely on a leash and things like that, we want to make sure that we're reinforcing those things. We're making sure that she feels like the world is a safe and fun place that brings her lots of good stuff. Um, and also, you know, keeping in mind that you're going to need to work with her on house training as she is just a six to seven month old puppy. Um, she's a little bit small, um, but, you know, she will probably fill out a little bit more. Um, so don't don't take the the weight that we have listed um, as, you know, her forever weight. I think she's under 30 pounds right now because she is still quite a young dog who's going to get bigger. So as a puppy, I'm sure she'll get a lot of attention for potential adopters. But what's a good family for her? What kind of family should adopt her? So because she can be a little bit initially uh, fearful and uh, does need someone who's going to understand the situations where she's feeling uncomfortable and to kind of give her some space, we are recommending that she not go to a family with really small children. Um, loud noises, fast movements, not understanding that maybe the dog doesn't want to be laid on or um, doesn't want to be touched in certain ways, um, doesn't want to share, you know, your really loud toys um, that some, some toddlers and things have. Um, but also just, again, recognizing that you need to be patient with her. She's, you know, um, if you're trying to introduce her to lots of new people, that might be overwhelming for her. If you're looking for a dog that you're going to be able to take out, you know, everywhere where there's lots of people and big crowds, that may or may not be something that she is going to ultimately enjoy. So just making sure that she's the dog that's going to fit your lifestyle and that you're not just rushing to make her part of your family because A, she's a puppy and B, she's really cute. Um, making sure that she is actually the right dog for you and your family. Um, but if you think that is the case and you want to meet with Apple, the first step is going to be going to visit fcac.as.me to book that appointment. Our next guest is just as cute, but a little bit older at one year old. Uh, this is Daisy. And uh, Daisy came to us previously owned. Um, while she was doing great with the older children in the household, the new baby was a little bit much for her. And that could be um, because she's a young dog who still needs to kind of work on some of her manners. But also a really important fact to understand about Daisy is that she's deaf. Um, so she can't really hear what's going on. So sometimes um, new environments and new people can can make her a little bit wary just because she can't hear what's going on. Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, deaf dogs, we've had many deaf dogs come through the shelter and be adopted out. Or um, we also had recently a deaf cat that was adopted out. So, you know, they're basically the same as any other pet. There are a couple of things that maybe we'll talk about a little later that can be helpful um, in making helping them transition. But you do want to be aware that um, you know, there is going to be a little bit more caution, you know, making sure that they're staying safe, um, making sure that they're supervised and things like that, um, because they can't hear um, what's going on. Um, in terms of her interactions, Daisy's been very friendly here with our staff. She's done really well with other dogs. Um, but in typical kind of pit bull type dog style, she likes to pull on her leash. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing new there. Um, she does get very excited. And sometimes she likes to nibble on things and get a little mouthy which is also not uncommon for a younger dog um but she's also really laid back typically you know it's a two or three person job to trim dog nails around here and uh, daisy got her nails trimmed with just one person so i think that says a little bit about kind of her calm and relaxed nature um but again still a young dog still a kind of high energy dog can be super uh bouncy and things like that um Again, her family said that she did really well with the kids that were like, you know, in the 10 to 12 to 15 age range, but it was just the new baby that was a little bit much for her. Um, and, you know, um, just being wary of strangers, which is not an uncommon thing for a dog that can't hear. So as you mentioned, she is deaf. So what does a new family or potential adopter need to know about adopting a deaf pet? So you always want to make sure that they can see you if you're trying to get their attention. Um, you know, you can train them just like you would train a, a hearing dog. But instead of using um, verbal cues, you would use uh, hand signals so that they know. Um, you can get their attention by doing things like getting in front of them and so that, the, you know, their eye contact meets with your body. Or sometimes even just stomping your feet on the ground, they can feel those vibrations. But it is really important to be aware that you don't want to come up from behind and startle them. You want to come around and face them so they can see you. And you don't want to mess with them when they're asleep. If they're really an asleep and you, you start messing with them, they can't hear you coming to kind of wake up. So um, those are situations where we don't want to get into those accidental fear bites because you've startled a dog. Um, so those are some really important things. There are a lot of great resources out there on, on um, you know, adopting and living with and, and taking care of deaf dogs. Um, 
I usually recommend people go to the whole dog journal and just type in the search box and lots of articles um, will come up on you know, that or any other issue that you have with your, with your canine friend. Um, but uh, when we do our adoption interviews, we generally go over those types of things with families so that they can be prepared um, and know what they're getting into. Um, if you um, think that Daisy is going to be a great fit for you and maybe some of your older uh, a family with older kids in the household, then you're gonna wanna go to visit fcac.as.me to make that appointment to meet with her. Our next guest is one of the more vocal that we have available, uh, as is his nature. He is a he's a hound dog. He's uh, listed as a coon hound mix, and he's got a great color. He's got the blue ticking, but he's also got some brown in there. Um, he's just a really uh, handsome guy. Um, he's about a year old, so he's still quite young. He still has uh, a lot of manners left to learn. Although the staff say he is he is doing better with you know walking and sitting and things like that. Um, they've been working with him. Um, which is a good thing. Um, they're trying to, you know, work with as many dogs as they can to help them um, have those just basics that will make them a little bit more adoptable. Um, he is a dog that is not suited for everyone. Um, he can be very mouthy. He can be very busy and active and energetic and, again, vocal. Um, <clears throat> so um, because of that, we have him recommended for um, teens and adults. So um, not, not, not for little kids, but also he's a dog that is really better suited for someone who has dog experience. He's not um, the a dog for a first time dog owner, you know, um, cause he can be a little bit of a handful in terms of his energy level and just uh, things that he needs to work on. And also he's not, he's not great with all dogs in all situations. So in a kennel environment, so maybe like at the vet's office or if you need to board him for a vacation, he's kind of dog reactive um, in any of those kennel situations. But when he's out in the field and he's parallel walking, he is able to make doggy friends. So just keeping that in mind that he might be a dog that um, can have friends and they can have play groups outside, but he may not do well even with doggy dog friends in his house. Um, so he might not want, you know, people visiting and coming inside, but they could play out in the fence yard and things like that. So just really paying attention um, to those things and making sure that it's going to be a good fit and uh, that we're not going to set him up for failure in any way. So as you said, he's a busy guy. So what kind of activities would you suggest? So definitely, you know, apartments aren't, aren't great for hounds anyway because they are very vocal. Um, so if you had a fenced yard giving him ton, a ton of play out there, he apparently really likes tennis balls. He didn't want to trade toys, but he would trade a t on one toy for a tennis ball. Um, so playing fetch and things like that. As a hound, they're very into following their nose. So maybe getting into some scent work, um, lots of hiking would be a good fit for him. Um, being mindful of other dogs on the trail, obviously. Um, you know, busy boxes, if you don't have any other pets in the household, hiding treats and letting him find them. There's tons of stuff and we can, as we generally do, talk about those things in adoption interviews. Um, but just making sure that he has things to keep him both physically and mentally stimulated because um, the saying a tired dog is a happy dog is a thing for a reason, <laughs> all right? Um, they tend to be much better behaved if they have an outlet for all of that, that energy. If you think that you can find tons of ways um, for uh, Odin here to get rid of all of his energy and he's going to be a good fit for you, go to visit fcac.as.me to make that appointment to meet. Our next guest definitely has more fur than most uh, available for adoption right now. This is Zul, and he's one of our husky mixes. He's listed as about a year and a half old, and uh, he was brought to us um, by a man who was watching him for a friend. So this uh, guy was watching Zul for one of his friends. He had the dog for about six months, and the, the guy never came back to get the dog. Um, at a certain point, uh, the guy who brought him to us was like, I can't keep him anymore. Um, so we're on the search for a good forever home for Zul. Um, he is listed as a typical Husky. I am not the Husky expert around here by any means, but uh, he can be a little dramatic, um, which is typical of Huskies. Uh, he, he definitely likes to sing and uh, make himself uh, known just like... Um, just like some of our, our hound friends like uh, Odin. So definitely a vocal guy. He's definitely energetic and he has his own mind. Um, needs something to keep him busy. Um, Huskies are tend, tend to be, you know, they're bred to be working animals and uh, to have things to do. Um, training is super important um, with a guy like this. Um, you know, we are looking for people who have Husky experience because Huskies can be uh, a little bit difficult to train. 
Um, you know, they have to have the right incentive. So you want to make sure that you're prepared for all of that huskiness. Just because he's a good looking guy doesn't mean that he's the right fit for, for your family. As you can see, he's also super, super playful. Um, but he uh, can be, a, uh, you know, uh, he likes to, to kind of... Uh, test his, uh, he has limits is what they were saying. He's friendly, but he has his limits. So we don't want people pushing him beyond those limits. And for that reason, he is listed as no small children. Um, so, you know, overall a, a very nice, curious, excited, uh, energetic dog, but do want to make sure that we're getting him into the right home where he's going to be there forever and not end up back here in the shelter just because someone liked how he physically looked. So I read that he can be quite an escape artist. So what did he do and what can his next family prevent escapes? So the, 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 the gentleman who brought him in said that he does, he, he, he described him as a runner. <laughs> um, um, and he's, he noted that uh, he was able to jump fences. So, um, you know, previous uh, new owners need to take that into consideration, making sure that their fence is, is tall. So, you know, a four foot fence probably wouldn't contain um, Zul, um, you know, six foot privacy fence, you know, um, not chain link because dogs can climb that. Um, and making sure that you're checking for weak spots in the fence, you know, just like in Jurassic Park, they look for those, they can dig under them and things like that. Um, so making sure that they're preventing, you're preventing any digging out, but mostly just making sure that when he's outside, he's supervised, um, even in a fenced area, making sure that he's supervised. Um, if he's not in an enclosed fenced area, making sure that he's on leash so that you have control of him because, um, you know, we don't want any accidents to happen. We don't want him to run off. We don't want any potential, you know, uh, for him getting hit by a car, or getting into an altercation with a person or another animal. Um, so just definitely making sure that you're taking that into consideration. Um, he's not a dog that you're just going to leave, you know, the doggy door and let him come and go as he pleases. Um, he is best suited to be supervised outside. Um, if you have the Husky experience that Zul kind of needs and you're interested in making him part of your family, then go to visit fcac.as.me to begin the process of making him your new pet. Our final guest today may seem familiar, and that's because she's been on the show before. Angel is now in kind of one of our, in, in a longest resident type of phase. Um, she is one of uh, six dogs that have been with us for about 100 days um, right now. And uh, she is also one of our senior dogs. I would say about a, a third of our dogs right now are in that senior age range with her and Samoa and Evan. And even I think Luna is now listed as like officially in our, our system as five. Then we have, uh, you know, uh, Zeus and Nelly, all, all dogs that are a little bit older. Um, but don't be fooled by her age. You know, when you're People don't see her in her kennel anymore other than us and the volunteers. In her kennel, she looks like a bit of a couch potato. Um, but uh, Angel is not a couch potato, I assure you. She is still full of energy. She likes to go run around in our various outdoor play areas, full-on zoomies. She loves to sniff. I brought her in here and was trying to get her to play with toys. She was like, no, I just want to sniff. I just want to walk around and sniff. Um, but when I started play bowing to her, then she was like, all right, it's on. Let's run around and play and have lots of fun. Um, she loves treats, um, but she does have an a food allergy. She's allergic to chicken, so you have to be very mindful about what kind of tasty, delicious things that you give her. Um, she knows sit, she knows down, she always gives paw. Um, you know, she walks fairly nicely on a leash. She's not like the worst. She could probably walk a little bit better. Um, but she, you know, she has a lot of those basic things. Um, she was previously owned and I believe they had to move and they moved to a place that they weren't allowed to have pets and they did have her for her entire life up to this point. Um, they noted that she did live with a cat previously, um, and that she did live with, with young children. I think they said ages three to three to four and up. So even young children she lived with previously. Um, and we don't have any, you know, age restrictions on the type of household that she could go to, um, she has a lot of great qualities for her. She could be hit or miss with other dogs. I think we're still trying to figure out if she likes dogs. Her previous family said she didn't really get along with them, but we've seen some positive signs that indicate that she might be able to, to at least have some dog friends. So she has fairly good manners, but there is one thing she needs to work on. What's that? So polite greetings is, uh, is Angel's uh, nemesis, if you will. Um, she gets very excited <clears throat> when she sees people, whether they're new people or people she knows, um, <clears throat> and she jumps up on them. And a lot of times that happens because uh, when 
dogs get excited to see their humans and they jump up. Then people are like, oh, you're so cute. And they rub them and pet them. And then the dog gets reinforced for that behavior. So they continue to do it because something good happened to them. So that's something that, you know, um, some families are okay with, but we are definitely trying to break with her here. And the way that you do that is you just ignore them when they jump up and don't give them any feedback. Because even if you're pushing them off, you're still giving them attention which is what they were after in the first place. Um, so just kind of working on no feedback until all of her feet are on the ground and then reinforcing that behavior so that she learns that all the good stuff happens when her feet are on the ground. It is still a work in progress. It can be um, a bit harder when they've been reinforced for that behavior for so long to break it, but it is something that we're aware of, we're trying to work on, um, and that her new adoptive family should should be aware of and know that you know they too can work on breaking that if it's not something that they are looking for in their pet. But for the most part, that's really like her only negative quality, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to find her a great forever family. She would even be great as maybe a first-time dog um, because she's a fairly fairly easy girl to have in your household. If you are looking for a wonderful, sweet older lady, um, then go to visit fcac.as.me to book that appointment to meet with Angel. As always, uh, the dogs and cats that you've seen on the show today are just a handful of our available pets. We have many more dogs, other cats, and we also have all of our small animal room residents. So if you're looking to add to your family and you haven't seen what you're looking for on the show, Go ahead and make that appointment to visit anyway. You never know what you might find here at Frederick County Animal Control. Mm-hmm.